What is up everyone, I'm going to be working on this sketch today while I talk about how to paint using acrylic washes. So this method of painting is uh, very useful for artists that want to maintain their drawing. Like this is obviously useful for anyone that wants to try it, but if you're an artist that likes more of an illustrative approach, like if you like drawing and you want to maintain your drawing throughout the painting process, this is ideal for someone like that. That's why this process works really well for me. This process almost works like watercolor in a certain sense where you might have a little bit less freedom, like you have to make sure that you know what you're doing ahead of time. You need to do a little bit more planning because once you put down a wash, painting over it might be very difficult to do, especially once you do the lines. But I'm just going to go over the process while you guys watch me paint. So the first thing to keep in mind is that you need to gesso your surface and gesso is basically like a primer. It's like this white liquid and it creates this absorbent uh, surface. So. You, all of my wood panels, they, they always look white because I put this gesso over top and it makes it very easy to paint on. You can also use gesso on canvas and everything and you pretty much gesso almost any surface that's not like shiny as long as it's not metal. I don't think you can gesso metal, but you can gesso almost any surface. And the best part about using gesso is that you can sand down the surface so it becomes smooth. So what you do is, for example, for my wood panels, what I will do is I'll gesso it once, put one coat of gesso, and then the surface will get like kind of prickly because of the wood will kind of stick out like some of the texture. So you can sand it down, do another coat of gesso, and you can keep doing this until you get this very smooth texture. And the same is true for canvas. Like a lot of canvas has like the, it's kind of like textured. If you want a very smooth surface, you can layer on a bunch of gesso and sand it down and you get this very smooth surface to work on. And you have to use gesso for this type of method. It's very hard to do washes on a material that isn't absorbent. So for this to work properly, you kind of have to gesso. I've never been able to do this without gessoing a surface first. So after you have your gessoed surface, what you need to do is you do your drawing on top of that. And you have to make sure that you're deliberate with your drawing because it's hard to erase. So the, the gesso surface, it's meant to absorb as quickly as possible. So it's hard to erase away mistakes. So you want to make sure that you have some idea of what you're going for. You're not going to be able to do all your sketching freehand on the surface without any idea where you're headed. So I also use a light blue pencil for a lot of my drawing and then some like solid pencil for parts where I want to be very specific. But using a light blue pencil is very useful because it won't show through. But that's kind of the problem when you're doing washes is that the pencil lines will show through if you screw up an area. So you kind of have to paint over all those things. So you want to make sure that your sketch is decently clean. Like it doesn't have to be perfect. Or obviously you can clean stuff up after, but you don't want to end up in this position where everything looks like a mess. But it's also kind of nice to have a little bit of texture, like having some lines show through could be a cool effect, you know, because uh, you want things to look traditional. You don't want things to look too perfect. At least that's how I feel about it. I feel like washes is a very good technique if you like textures and variation in your piece. If you don't want like a perfectly flat version, like there's a lot of like graphic design approaches where things look very flat. This is more of a traditionally painted uh, way of doing things like the end of uh, the end result will look very handmade and it will look very traditionally created. It doesn't look like very digital. So once you have your lines, your sketches done, what you do is you do your acrylic lines. So that's what you're watching right now is me doing the acrylic lines. So for your acrylic lines, you want to make sure that you pick a color that you want. So maybe you want to use black for all your lines, but I usually use Payne's gray because it's like a slightly blue color, but it's still very close to black. So it's very dark. But you can also play around with different color lines. It's hard to do colored lines that are too light, right? Like you can't really use like a light yellow for your lines. That's very challenging to see through the washes. But something like a dark red, dark green, dark blue or black, those are all great colors to use for your lines. And you just want to make sure that your lines are as clean as possible because they will show through. So these lines, you have to be very deliberate. This is, takes a lot of time. It takes quite a bit of time to do the lines, but once you have the lines, it becomes very easy to paint, right? Because then it just becomes almost like a coloring page where you're just filling in the spaces. So it does take, take a bit of time to do acrylic lines, but it's become it makes everything else easier down the road, especially if you're trying to maintain your drawing. So then you do, so the next step is just do the acrylic lines. Make sure that the color is dark enough. Once you're done your acrylic lines, what you want to do is you want to build up washes and you want to start light. By starting light, you can kind of see the piece develop and you want to make sure that you plan your colors ahead of time, right? So you want to know what colors you're aiming for. You don't have to have the exact colors down, but you at least need to have some idea what you're going for. Like, where do you want your colors to go? So for example, for me, I knew I wanted to do blue 
and yellow for this piece. I started with a blue background and I started with a coat of cerulean blue in the background, very light, wash down, right? So I take the paint, wash it down with a lot of water. So it's a good idea to have like a misting bottle or some sort of way to put water down easily instead of having to dip your a brush into your water constantly to move the water you might want to find a different way to like an eyedropper tool or something that will help you put water down or like you know any any other small container with water will make this very easy so you mix your paint in with a lot of water then put it down right so this is basically turning your acrylic paint into watercolor but one thing you need to keep in mind while you do this is one it's a be quick with paper towel if you need to erase away stuff right so let's say you accidentally go over an area that you didn't want your color to be. Make sure to dab it with paper towel and just erase it away pretty much. And you want to give it time to dry. So it just takes a little bit of time to wait between washes. But if you put the washes down deliberately, it won't feel like it takes a long time, right? So you can put down some blues in one area, then go over to a different area, put down some yellows there. And then as long as you move around the piece, it'll be very easy to do this quickly. One thing that I'll note about using colors is to try to use similar colors over the piece, or at least this is my approach where I have one color theme for the entire piece, and that makes it very uh, cohesive. I know there are approaches like more pop surrealism where artists will use like a ton of colors in the same piece. And that's obviously one approach. If you like that type of style, you want to go for that type of thing. Obviously go, go ahead and try that. But for me, I try to keep the colors to about three to four usually two main colors and then I have a third color and then some tonal colors. So what I mean by that is for this piece, I did cerulean blue and yellow. Those are my two main colors. And then I had some green for the leaves, which that's my third color. And my tonal colors are red for my shadows for the yellows, right? So you see me use a bunch of red in this piece. And then I also use Payne's gray for the darker blues. So this gives me a very specific color palette, especially when you're doing washes, you kind of want to know which colors you're going to put in. And this gives me a very minimal palette to work with, so the entire piece feels cohesive. So that's a good way to pick colors, especially in the beginning when you're just getting used to colors like myself. I, I think if you try to do too many colors all at once, it becomes very challenging. It's a, it's a mistake I made in my, one of my previous pieces where I tried to use too many different greens and it just got too complicated. I added way too many colors and the piece just feels kind of all over the place. This piece feels a little bit more cohesive because the colors are similar all over the piece. So looking at the painting, you slowly build up your darks. You can always do washes of white to soften areas, but you basically want to build up your darks, do more washes over and over again. You want to pay attention to the saturation of your color. So do you want a very vibrant color or do you want a dull down color? The way you dull down a color is you put like a shadow tone over top of it. A lot of times people will use like a brown to make it feel a little bit more earthy or maybe like use a Payne's gray is perfect for like if you want to just dull down a color or even black. I feel like black is kind of hard to use though because it's kind of, it tends to be like a dead color. So if you do washes of it, it kind of deadens the piece. If you try to use something that's slightly more gray, like a Payne's gray or like an earthy tone, it gives the piece a little bit more vibrancy. Obviously you have to figure out what colors you're trying to use. You know, black can be useful in certain areas, but you want to pay attention to does the piece look dead if you use too much black? It really depends on what type of colors you're using. But what you want to do is you slowly build up your darks until you have all your darks finished and the piece is almost fully rendered, right? So you want to make pay attention to mid-tones and shadows at this stage. So once you're done your darks and they're complete, what you do is use white to do highlights. And this is kind of the fun part because it's the easiest part of the process where you just go in with white, do white lines for the highlights, you render out everything, right? So in the previous steps, we built up the mid-tones and the shadows. Now you can go in and the highlights with the white. And one thing that you might wanna do is also go over your whites. Like once you have your white lines down, you can also do like a light wash of a color on top of the whites if you wanna like add a, a more variation in the color of the whites, right? So if you're, let's say you put some white lines in an area that you want to be more in shadow, you can do a wash of a shadow tone over top of it and it will blend in nicely. It will, it will look fully rendered. And this process is really quick in terms of like rendering because it's very deliberate and the highlights come in very quickly. Like it's not something that takes a long time depending on how many elements you have in the piece. That's basically all the steps for the process. It, the process isn't very complicated. It just takes a lot of practice 
and it's also a fun process, especially if you're someone who's trying to move move from drawing to painting and you're trying to find a traditional way of working. This way is great. That I, I feel super happy that I figured this out. And I highly recommend that you try this if you like working traditionally. You can also do a digital approach that's pretty much the same thing, but you don't really need to do washes technically. Well, I guess you could do washes, but it, it'll be obviously be a different process. But that's basically it for the process of painting using acrylic washes. So talking about this painting that I've been working on, I'm really happy with this painting, especially in terms of the concept. This is one of my favorite concept drawings I've ever done. I was really nervous about doing this piece because of that, because there's a lot of pressure to do well with this one. I struggled a bit with the colors. I kind of regret well, like some of the color choices, like I wish I had done the flowers in a more dull color, and I wish I had done the leaves in a dull color as well. Like I feel like the vibrancy of the flowers turned out as bright as the character, and I, I'm starting to realize that a lot of my pieces feel a little bit too busy just because I have these elements that are equally vibrant to the actual character design, and what I'm going to do moving forward is take it more of an art deco, art nouveau approach where you do more flat designs in the background and you just have the character kind of in the foreground and have it be a little bit more separate, like have the background be a little bit more flat in terms of design. So I did some of like the design elements in the on the sides, on the edges of this piece, I did these flat designs, just kind of lines, um, kind of hard to explain, but if you look in the corners of this piece, when I, when I look at the finished piece, there are some of these flat designs and I think I'm going to move towards that for the background and stop using so many flowers and stuff, these flowy elements, and try to just make them a little bit more flat, push them more into the background so that the character stands out a little bit more. Like this piece, I'm, I'm happy with how this, this turned out, especially the character, but the background could have been better. So that's definitely something I'm going to pay attention to on my next piece. I'm going to use a more art deco approach for the background of the next pieces. And that's it for this piece. If you like this painting, make sure to join the mailing list over on the website. The link will be in the description. And I also have a bunch of drawing tutorials and stuff that you can check out like free worksheets. And that will also be linked in the description. And if you want to support this painting project, these spirits that I'm painting, I also have Patreon membership in the, in the description that you can check out where I have exclusive videos. And I also do like uh, early access to sketches and stuff. So I do a bunch of exclusive stuff over on the Patreon membership that will also be linked in the description if you want to be part of the project. And thank you guys so much for checking this out. Hope this was useful and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Bye bye.